We're at Anime NYC 2024. I have talked about it before, but is this the best anime convention in the U.S.? I think so, but let's find out. So I was at Anime NYC. Now I'm back home. Let's discuss it. So I'm going to start off just going off everything here. I'm going to show you some clips along the way of stuff that I saw, stuff that I thought was cool, and just kind of put some in here along the way that I think were interesting. Now, I want to really quickly, before I talk about anything else, I want to break the, you know, conspiracy here. I bought my way to Anime NYC this year. This is the plus badge, and I'm going to talk about that later in the video. So, this is not a completely biased thing. I, I did not get my badge for free. Now, I got this badge for free. So, yes, technically... I did get a free badge from Anime NYC this year. I did get the Influencer badge. I signed up for it thinking that I wouldn't be able to get this one. I ended up getting it, so, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to review it as an Anime NYC Plus member or badge holder, but I'm not going to act like I didn't get a free badge as well. So just take that into account. Am I completely unbiased? No. But am I going to try to be as unbiased as I can be? Absolutely. So Anime NYC has been a convention that has been around for a few years now. It's been back into the late 2010s, just whenever it was created. It's like on its sixth or seventh year now. Um, and I have gone to now four of them. Um, I went to 2021, I went to 2022, 2023, and now 2024. I was a plus member or a plus badge holder for every year it's existed. Uh, it was created last year and now I have it again this year, um, which is pretty much just VIP. It's the expensive badge that you get a bunch of bonus stuff with. Um, so we're going to talk about that at the end, as I mentioned, but uh, let's just talk about the convention in general why I like this convention so much that I would go back four years in a row and I would get their VIP badge two years in a row. Um, so let's get right on into all that. So the first thing that I want to bring up is that this convention used to exist in November. It was always in November. This year it was shifted to August um, and I have a few opinions on that. Um, for one, they did expand the convention a little bit. Um, not a whole lot, but a little bit. Um, with this, uh, it seemed like we were able to get another panel room, which was the Sakura stage, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, which was cool. Uh, we did get a new stage. However, um, last year we had access to the Crystal Palace, which was a big room on the top floor of this convention center at the Javits Center in New York, and it was a really cool room. It had a ton of seating, great spot, and it was uh, come and go seating throughout it. Uh, it was sponsored by Crunchyroll last year. Um, that was a great place. Uh, this year it was sponsored by Hulu. And I'm going to be honest, this was the weakest part of the entire convention, in my opinion. I did not go up there until the final day. And it was just cosplayers, which is great. Cosplayers are great. Here's some cool cosplayers that I saw during the convention, by the way. Um, but they only made this area for cosplayers, which... It's fine that they have this big area for cosplayers, but this was such a cool room for like screenings and concerts and whatever. And then we just got that taken away and we get thrown in the basement pretty much for the Sakura stage. I don't like that. Uh, I think that was a wasted opportunity. I think that was a great addition last year and now it's not there. So unfortunately that's gone and I have problems with how the Sakura stage was ran, but you know, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, but let me talk about just some things that I really liked. Uh, number one, this is one of the best exhibit halls for an anime convention that I've seen. Uh, there are idol anime that you can watch. There are VTuber stuff. There is shonen, uh, shoujo, whatever you're interested in. If you're interested in just artist stuff, there's tons of artist stuff. If you're interested in Funko Pops or Nindroids or just anime figures, there's tons of booths for that. If you're interested in only official stuff, whether it be Good Smile or Aniplex or uh, the uh, Bushy Road or Bandai Namco, all of that is there. Um, you can go to any of those booths and they have stuff going on. Um, 
they have interactive stuff. They have a ton of stuff in this exhibit hall. This exhibit hall was fantastic. You will not find a better exhibit hall in an anime convention, in my opinion. This was just amazing. You can't beat it. With this, though, they shifted it this year. Um, what happened was is they put the uh, artist in the back of the convention hall. Usually it, they were on the far end of it. This year they were on the back. I did talk to a few artists and see their reactions from it. And some of them were very, you know, they thought it was a good idea. Some of them were not that uh, pleased with it. So, you know, is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? I, I personally liked it because I thought it was a great place. To, if you just wanted to go walk through the artist alley, it was a great, easy way to do it. I thought it was a bit more open than last year. Last year it was very cramped. This year it's a bit more open, and I appreciated that quite a bit. Um, they did have an entire hall for gaming, tabletop gaming, video games, arcade games. That was a great spot. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, it was something that was unique, in my opinion. Um, and... I didn't spend a whole lot of time there, but it was really cool uh, the few times that I did go there. So good on that. And overall, I obviously, because I have the plus badge, I didn't go through the general queue and morning queues. But from the few people I talked to that did, no one really had a problem with this. So seemingly, it went pretty smoothly. And as for the plus uh, badge with the queuing, it was 10 out of 10. Last year it was very confusing because no one really knew what the plus badge was. This year, obviously, they had told everybody beforehand, this is where the plus members go, this is where the pro members go, this is where press goes, this is where influencer badge goes, this is where general badge goes, this is where accessibility uh, badge holders go. Everything was in line this year whenever it came to entrance procedures. Very happy about that. No complaints at all with that. One small caveat, and this is not something that really I had a problem with. I actually enjoyed this, and I'm very happy that they did this, and I don't know why they did this. But on uh, the first day, uh, the Plus members, and this is something they stressed in emails uh, going up to the con, they were like, Plus members do not have early access. They have uh, first access, not early access. So the con was supposed to open at 11. On the first day, I got there at 11, and I was able to go in at 11. Uh, day two, uh, the con was supposed to open at 10. I got there at 9 o'clock. Uh, I got me a coffee thing, and then I went in line, and it was like 9.20, and then I'm lining up. I'm you know, just kind of chilling there, thinking I got 40 more minutes till I'm going to be here, and like 9.30 rolls around, and they're like, you can go. I, did, I didn't know that. Uh, nobody really knew that because some of the booths, actually the first, the second day at 930, none of the booths were open. None of them. I went to Good Smile because I bought something from Good Smile. Um, and they were like, we're not going to be open for like 30 more minutes because our manager is not here. I was like, okay, fair enough. I went to another booth. They were like, we're still setting up. Uh, went to Artist Alley. Half the artists have their like tarps and their plastic still over their stuff um, that they put over it at night, and half of them weren't even there. So uh, I don't think there was a great communication on like what time we were supposed to be let in. Uh, I did appreciate that, and I wish they just tell the vendors, hey, they're going to get in early, so you need to be at your booth at 9 o'clock so you're ready to go, or 9.30 at least. So... Is that something they can improve on in the future? I think so. I think that's a great thing for Plus members that I would absolutely love if they would continue to do that. Um, whether they continue to do that, I don't know. I They did that on the third day. We got in at 30 minutes early. Some booths had kind of planned ahead and they were ready to go at 9.30. Good Smile still was not ready at 9.30, but they were ready at 10. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I appreciated it. I was very happy with it. So I don't know if that's on purpose, but it was cool. Um, so let me talk real quick about uh, some problems that I had. And these are not major problems. These are nothing that makes me say, I'm never going back to this con. I will buy 2025 tickets the day they go on sale. No hesitation at all. I will buy 2025 badges 100%. But, in my opinion, 
to make a convention better going forward, you need to voice your issues with it, give your feedback, and that way it can be improved even more going forward. This is a problem that Anime Expo has not solved. Anime Expo every single year has been told you have too many people. The place is too packed. Nobody can get around. It's way too crowded for this space. There's not enough stuff for everybody, and it's just not enjoyable. And what do they do? They just keep selling a massive amount of tickets. One major plus that I can give Anime NYC is that if you have a problem that is widely voiced one year, that problem will most likely be solved the next year. They will continue to get better and they improve every single year. Obviously this year there was a change growing from November to August. It was a shorter turnaround time, so I think some of these problems were just shorter turnaround time. I believe half of these problems that I'm about to voice will be fixed next year, no worries at all, but it is something that I want to voice to tell them, hey, if it was me and I had control over this, this is what I would fix. It's not complaining, it's criticizing politely. You know, I, I'm trying to be polite. I, you gave me a free badge, I'm trying to... I'm trying to be nice. The main thing that I have an issue with is the reservation system. Uh, the reservation system was a way to reserve panels or autographs or whatever. Um, and the way this happened was you went online and what happened was is it became a first come first serve basis. You were able to make a reservation with that panel uh, like in advance. So say for the Love Life panel. Uh, the day it came, it was like on a Wednesday, I tuned in first thing, and I reserved my panel, uh, which was the Love Live panel. Um, I didn't get anything else. I didn't think I was supposed to get anything else because they didn't tell me I was supposed to get anything else. I thought I was all good. I go to the con. They're like, hey, you need a QR code? I'm like, there is no QR code. So I cancel that reservation because the thing still says make reservation. So I cancel that reservation and I re-reserve that panel before the panel takes place because you can still do this. And I re-reserve the panel and it does not give me a QR code. Nothing is emailed to me. I, do get, I don't get one if I just click the button. Uh, can't do it. And I'm, I'm showing the guy, hey, I'm reserving this panel. Uh, and it's like not letting me. So uh, what happened was is that uh, then they just would look up your name and I told them my name they looked it up and it was not there however something else was there and I'll talk about this here in a minute which is another problem that I have but we'll get to that um, but if you had your name there they were like okay go you're good um, but then and I'm not going to like get mad at anybody because th the staff members are doing their best this is an event to where you are dealing with thousands of people there is a few hundred staff they're trying their best it is chaos i get this i understand however they eventually and i overheard a lady say it they said i'm just taking their word for it because i don't know what's going on <sighs> don't do that don't do that just make your system work so at this point, um, my badge, whenever they or whenever they looked up my name, uh, they did see something. And that thing was that I had a Love Live reservation. That Love Live reservation was for the screening of the Idolmaster concert, um, which I had bought a ticket for. I spent about $18, or not 18 like 20 bucks for this. Uh, and I spent the money to get this convention ticket, or this concert ticket, which was just a screening. It was not a in-person thing. Um, and I have this Blu-ray coming. It, it's coming next or this month, so I'm not worried about this or whatever. But what they did was, is they said, "Yep, I see your reservation right here. Click," and they clicked it, and then it went on to uh, let me in. And this is, this is not the 
screening that I'm trying to get into. I'm trying to get into the Love Live Superstar panel, um, which I was able to get into. Great event. Panel went fantastic. Uh, the guests were great, and I'll talk more about the guests here in a minute, but I'm talking about this right now. Um, panel was great. Uh, but then I checked later because I was like, I, I saw that on her iPad that said Idolmaster Love Live. That did not say Superstar. So I looked into it, and if I went on to the uh, reservation thing that I had made, uh, it showed my Idolmaster Love Live concert screening that I could click on. And whenever I clicked on it, it said checked in. Um, and I was like, well, that's not good, because whenever I go to that concert, uh, it will show that I have already checked in, that I've already scanned this QR code, and they're going to say, hey, you're, you can't use this, it's already been used. Um, which is what they will use to prevent people from just sending their friends that QR code and then their friend gets in behind them. It's a great system if it's done right. Uh, unfortunately, the staff did not know how to use this and because of the problems with the Sakura panel and not being able to do that, they were not able to do this correctly. So what ends up happening is that if I was to go to that Idolmaster panel later on and seeing the screening and whatever, uh, they wouldn't let me in. Uh, which, I'm going to be honest, uh, this was way too much conflict for me to deal with. Um, I was really tired that day and was not really in a mood to where I was like, I want to go deal with this. No, I was like, I don't feel like dealing with it. I know it's going to be a mess. So I just didn't go. Uh, I didn't go to that screening. Um, do I have any like, oh, I wish I would have gone? No. Uh, I don't really regret not going. Um, they would have given me a poster. They would have given me a light stick panel thing that I didn't really want because it was the one from Los Angeles, um, not one from New York, which is a complaint from Love Live people. Why did you bring the Los Angeles one to New York? I know you have leftovers of them, and I know that's why you did it. Don't make so many of them for Los Angeles. Just make new ones for New York. What do I know? Uh, but anyway, so I didn't even fool with that. Uh, it was too much conflict for me, but I knew that would be an issue. I didn't bother with it, but it is something that I really hope is fixed for the future. Um, something that has been done in the past that was not done this year is that they would have special event ticket wristbands that you would get. You would go first thing in the morning or first whenever you wanted to go get them, and you would go to the special events desk. They would give you a wristband once they scanned your QR code. You would uh, get your wristband. That wristband would say Love Live Superstar on it or, you know, Love Live Concert Screening, whatever. Um, and they would just say, okay, just show this to them whenever you go to the uh, panel later and you'll be able to get in. It was very smoothly for the people that were working that panel. All the people that had to work, worry with the QR code was at that table. Uh, and they're not trying to do it 100 people at a time because it's split out through the entire day. It worked great. For whatever reason, they didn't do that this year. Unfortunately, I th this is such an easy concept to fix. Just do the wristbands. Just do the wristbands again. That will solve every problem that I had with this convention this year. Do the wristbands. Please do the wristbands. It will solve so many problems. But anyway, enough about that. So let's talk about guests. Um, there was a wide variety of guests this year, um, not as many as some years, um, and I don't think as great of guests as some years. Um, I think there was a really good, you know, choice of a few guests. Um, unfortunately, the way it seems is is that they are trying to get a variety of guests instead of saying, you know, some conventions will be all in on this thing this year, or all in on this show this year. Um, they try to do a wide variety, um, which is fine, and I am happy about that. Um, I did meet four people this year, and I'll get to them here in a minute. Uh, but one complaint that I will give about the guest before I start to compliment the guest is that uh, there's been a few guests that we've had for multiple years. Uh, I love uh, Bryce uh, Pappenbrook. Um, the voice of Aaron, um, the voice of Benovsky, he's a great guy, great guy. He is very energetic. He always has a huge line at AMMC, and if he keeps coming, that's fine. I am not upset about that. 
um, but him and a few other voice actors and actresses uh, are there for, they, this is like third year they've been there. And while that is fine, uh, they're taking up a boost spot that someone else could have. And while I want to say, yeah, it's great that I see him every year, that I can see if I wanted to go visit him or whatever, um, unfortunately, I don't really care to meet Bryce multiple years in a row. I'd rather let someone new come in and say, hey, I met someone new this year that I had never seen before. Um, maybe, you know, he comes back every other year or something. Uh, some of these people, they, uh, you know, they had a really big line the first year. Now the second year, I noticed their line was a little smaller. Um, so I think people, maybe they, they came last year, they met them, and now this year they're like, hey, I don't really need to meet them this year. Um, so unfortunately, I think that's the case. And I think you can easily fix this by just swapping out more guests, not having the same guest as last year. Um, with this, though, come some compliments. Um, previously, before Anime NYC was canceled one year for the pandemic, what we got was uh, we got a lot of Love Live guests. And this was one of my main reasons for wanting to come. Um, and unfortunately, up until now, there's been no Love Live guests. There has been an Anime Expo, but there's never been one in New York. Um, but this year, that changed. Uh, we've got uh, three of them that arrived this year. Um, they were the Superstar guest, with Superstar getting Season 3 this year. They were there to promote that. Um, and I was able to meet three of them. And uh, this was phenomenal. Um, meeting them was great. It was the voice of uh, Sumier and Conan and May. Uh, they were great. And they were fantastic. There were tons of people that were very excited to meet these three. And I am so happy that I got to meet them. They were phenomenal. Um, the way they did it was pretty much with the Bandai Namco, you know, group. And their booth did it more than, like, the event did it. So how much of that is on the event? Obviously, the event did work with Bandai Namco to make them come there. So it is on the convention for, you know, I have to praise them for this. So good job, Anime NYC, getting them there, hopefully. One year, maybe we can get a concert for uh, Love Live there. I think that would really be popular. Um, this was a really popular event, in my opinion. I, I mean, a lot of people came to this. And I think if you really, you know, continue to show, hey, Love Live comes to this event, then if you ever did a concert, you're going to have enough U.S. Love Live fans that would know, hey, if I go to this event, I'll probably see a Love Live, you know, idol or whatever. So I think you would be, have enough to be able to do that. So I think it's worth checking out and looking into for future years. Um, obviously, there was more uh, Japanese voice actors that I just didn't meet. Um, I, you know, last, I don't really like to go to a um, voice actor or a creator that I don't know a lot about. That seems kind of wrong for me like there was a one piece uh, voice actor that was very popular and people were telling me about him uh, i don't know him and unfortunately if i've not seen his work i'm not going to go up and meet him and you know try to act like yes i watch your stuff all the time that feels uh ingenuine to me and i don't want to do that that doesn't feel right i want to have somebody that's like yes i love your work and that's i'm genuinely telling them that um, and, but I did meet one, and this was an English voice actor, but he was great. And this was a group of them from Critical Role that showed up. And uh, if you don't know, Critical Role is a online uh, video thing they do. And they, I don't know them from Critical Role, but there is quite a bit of them there. Um, but one of them that was there uh, was Matthew Mercer, the voice of Levi from Attack on Titan. And I am doing a Attack on Titan project. If you have not seen it before, I've mentioned it and shown it a few times on the channel. Uh, and I had him sign this for Levi to add that to the project. So, very nice guy. Um, obviously, uh, they weren't all there. Uh, Ashley, which is a part of that, uh, was not there. Um, and she is the voice of the original voice of Sasha. She is incredibly hard to find because she only comes to like one one convention max a year. 
and it's usually San Diego Comic Con. So unfortunately, wasn't able to meet her, but I did get Matthew, and Matthew was phenomenal to meet. So good on that. So before I kind of give my general overview before I go, let me real quick talk about the Anime NYC Plus badge. Um, this badge cost right at $300. Um, the normal badge costs right at about $100, so there's about $200 markup. Um, what do you get bonus with that? Um, you got a exclusive lounge, and that lounge is great. Um, I'm going to be honest, that is a great place uh, to go just find somewhere to sit, to eat, um, to just take a break. They have a coat check thing that's exclusive to that room. It doesn't sound as valuable as it does, but it is there, and I was happy about that. You get an exclusive pin. It's just a pin that's nothing special. It doesn't say plus member or whatever. It's just a design. I'm fine with that. You get a lanyard that does not say plus on it. You know, whatever. Um, and then you get a water bottle. Is that enough? I don't know. I wish we got a t-shirt, but... I'm not going to complain because I don't come for the merch bag. I come for the extra stuff. Which, what is that extra stuff? Well, usually it's uh, getting main access or exclusive access to the front few rows of the main stage panels and guaranteed access to the main stage panels, which is what I usually am there for, um, which we'll get to. We'll get to. However, um, this year we did get that, um, but uh, we do get, you know, first access. I talked about that earlier. However, this year with the introduction of the Sakura stage, um, it was kind of confusing on whether or not the Anime NYC Plus members would be able to get first access to the seats in that room as well. Um, it turns out we did not, um, and... Uh, what you had to do is, if you did not make a reservation, which because of the fiasco going on with the Love Live thing, it seemed like I was not going to get uh, access to that panel. Um, so what they told me was, go stand in the standby line, and if the panel is not full, um, you can go find a seat. And if it is full, you can stand in there, in the back, in the back row. I don't like that. Um, now, I did not go to a lot of panels, mostly because I didn't really like the panel lineup this year, and that's what I've been saving for another thing as well. Um, there was a few cool ones. To be honest, there were some really cool ones. Uh, Creepy Nuts was there. I didn't go see them, but they were there. Um, I, you know, once again, if I don't know them enough, I'm not going to take a seat away from somebody who would like them just because I can say I'm there. No, if somebody else... If this is a panel that somebody else will really enjoy, I'm going to let them really enjoy it. I'm not going to just take a seat because I want to go experience something. No. But uh, I heard it was great, and that's great. You know, I'm fine with events that are good, that I can see are good, but that are not for me. Creepy Nuts was that. Uh, there was other ones that was great. Uh, Dan 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 was there uh, for a world premiere. That was great. Uh, Ranma Half was there. I didn't want to go watch the world premiere because... I want to save that and watch it whenever it comes out. Uh, Terminator was there. Uh, I had to go do something in New York that night, so I was not able to go to that, but I would have went to that. Um, the world premiere for that was going on. That seemed pretty cool. Um, and honestly, that's about it for the main stage. There was, I think in total, about eight things going on in the main stage. Uh, Critical Role had a panel there. I didn't go to that as well, but I'm just saying it was there. Um, so there was about eight main stage panels. Um, that seems a little low for me to be able to have access to a panel stage that I would get access to. I want like, you know, at least four or five a day. You know, just boom, boom, boom. Even if they're small, like Steve Bloom, put him out there on the main stage. I'm fine with that. Put him out there. Why not? Uh, the main stage was sitting empty for like half the time. Uh, the Love Life panel was on the Sakura stage. It wasn't on the main stage. Should have been on the main stage. Why not? Um, and that's what caused the fiasco there. 
I get you want to have two stages going simultaneously. That's easier to set up for the next one. It's easier to get everybody out, get everybody in. I get it. But if you're going to have a plus membership, if you're going to have a VIP badge, just let them have access to both. Just say, tell your staff, have an, a special line for VIP and let them go in. Because I will guarantee you, you're going to have maybe, max, a hundred of us that will show up for that. Probably no more than like 20 though. Just saying. So it's not hard to say, the first two rows, Anime NYC Plus. Behind that, it's everything else. And if you don't show up before 15 minutes before, then we're going to start putting, you know, regular people in there. So I I'm fine with that. But just give us access to it. If I spend this much money on a plus badge, I want to be able to get my use out of the plus badge. So, so all this sounds like I'm being overly harsh on this con. And that I'm saying it's an awful con, that it was ran poorly, and that you shouldn't go. Absolutely not. Don't get that impression at all. I had a phenomenal time. Anime NYC is one of my favorite events of the entire year. One of my favorite moments of the past few years. This year is one of my favorite times going yet. Um, the Love Live event was one of the best memories of my life. This was on my birthday and it was great. I had a ton of fun. Um, so I'm very happy to be able to enjoy all of this at Anime NYC. I love that it was, you know, a bit warmer this year that was a plus even I know some people were big on you know they wanted it in uh, you know November versus August I liked it in August but that's just me all the artists were great I had a lot of fun looking at all the art I thought they were all great choices I thought they were all worthy of being there I thought all the vendors were great there was some really good deals that I found I'll show you in a video in a few days so is it worth your money to go check it out? Absolutely. Go check it out. Anime Frontier is in Texas. It's pretty much just an Anime NYC light, to be honest. Go check that out if you're interested. And if that's closer to you, go check that out. You will not be disappointed with Anime NYC. If you've went to Anime Expo and you're thinking, this is too crowded for me, go to Anime NYC. You'll probably have a better time. So, overall... I had a lot of fun, and I recommend it to you. Is all of my complaints that I had maybe too much? Maybe am I complaining, overly complaining to you? Maybe, maybe. But I had a lot of fun. And to me, you know, to criticize is to show I love this convention. I want it to get better. I want to work out these kinks. I want it to be the best it can possibly be, and I feel like we are really close. They took two steps forward, but one step back. You know, they changed a lot of things. I think a lot of changes were for the better. Did they make some mistakes in, that they didn't have in the past? Absolutely. Is that to be expected? They had a nine-month turnaround instead of a 12-month turnaround? Maybe that's the case. I don't know. Um... You know, there's a lot to unpack with this convention this year. But overall, I think it was a fun time. Um, so, yeah, I do recommend it. I do recommend you look into it. Badges usually go on sale about January, sometimes December. Um, so stay tuned for that. I will update you once they are uh, announced and will be on sale very soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, I did meet uh, some of you, or one of you there. Um, it was really fun to meet you. Um, so thank you so much for, you know, hollering at me to come meet me. Um, that was great. You know, I got to meet some, you know, people that I knew online. So that was very fun. Um, and, you know, finally just, you know, I is it better than Anime, Anime Expo? In my opinion, I've not been to Anime Expo, but from everything I've heard, yes, you will, you will enjoy it. And in my opinion, 
those are the two big ones of the you know U.S. So the question I asked, is this the best anime convention in the U.S.? Yeah, but it has it needs to get a little bit better, a little bit better, and I think it will. I think it will. But uh, like I said, there will be a video up in a few days where we talk about you know everything that I picked up there. It's a big video, so stay tuned for that. Um, and then I'll be back for normal content past that. So anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope it didn't come off as just I'm rambling talking about the convention because I just try to get my thoughts out and trying to tell you, convince you to go pretty much because I have a lot of fun and I think you will too. Um, but anyway, um, thank you so much for checking the video out and you know thank you to Anime NYC for letting me you know cover this event because I would have covered it anyway if it was just this. But, you know, this is something great as well. So, but thank you for that. Uh, but anyway, that'll be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time.